Hello, everyone. In this section, I'm going to talk about how to choose a meta research project. So the first principle that's important when you're choosing a meta research project or any other research project is to explore many different ideas for research projects. If you only have one idea, then you will end up pursuing that idea despite obvious flaws. But when you have many different ideas, you can compare the strengths and weaknesses of each of these ideas and select the best proposal. And when we're talking about many ideas, we want to have different ideas in different research topics or different areas. If your ideas are all very narrowly focused and close together, then you won't have the breadth of strengths and weaknesses to compare that you might have if you had a broader range of ideas to choose from. Now, developing and exploring different ideas can take a lot of time, so you don't need to explore all of the ideas all the way to the end. It's fine to discard an idea as soon as you know that it won't be one of your top choices, and there are many reasons why you might discard an idea. So, for example, you may learn that it's not feasible to do what you want to do. You may decide that the idea isn't particularly interesting to you or your research team. You may find that the proposed study has methodological flaws that you are not able to resolve with the time and resources that you have available. Or you may simply find that you have other ideas that are stronger, more impactful, or for other reasons are more likely to be the idea that you will ultimately choose. So as you're developing out your ideas, you're going to start with many and then gradually thin those ideas out to a small number when you realize that different ideas probably won't end up being one of your final choices. So there are four criteria that we want to consider when we're choosing a meta research project. The first one is impact. So we want to look for projects that have the potential to change research practice. The goal of meta research is to improve research. And so we're not aiming simply to have a publication that we can list on our CV. We want to further a conversation, to develop a solution, to share ideas about how we can improve research practice that will resonate with others based on hard data. So here are some things that you might consider when you're thinking about whether this is an impactful project that has the potential to change research practice. The first thing you want to look at is the problem itself. So you might start by thinking about how common the problem is. If the problem is something that only occurs in your specific subfield of research, then it is ultimately impacting fewer papers than a problem that is common across many different research fields. And so you might prefer the project that has potential to impact many different research fields because it's more widely applicable. There can still be very good reasons to pursue a project that's narrowly focused on something that happens in your particular research field if that problem has a very significant impact on the quality of the research that's being done. Um, However, you want to look at how common the problem is, as well as how important the effects of the problem are. So sometimes a problem occurs in many different areas of research, but the overall effects of that problem on the quality of research probably are not very large. In other cases, you may find a problem that is affecting fewer papers, but has a major impact on the quality of that work, the rigor of that research that's being done, and our ability to reuse the results. And so thinking about how common the problem is and how important the effects are, are both factors you should consider when you're looking at the potential for impact. The third thing you want to know is what your work will add to existing studies and resources on the topic. So if you are moving into an area of meta research that's new, where there's not a lot available, often the bar for starting a new conversation or doing something that has impact is lower. 
if there are already a lot of different studies on that particular topic, more is known and you're going to have to spend more time thinking about where the gaps might be and how you will address those gaps or how you could contribute in a way that isn't already covered by existing tools and resources. After you think about the problem, you next want to think about solutions. So the goal of meta-research is not to complain about problems, it's to find solutions that will ultimately improve research. Sometimes there may be solutions that are already available that you can take advantage of and that will help to solve your problem. Other times there may not be solutions available and you want, may want to create or start developing new solutions as a result of your project. You may also find that there are solutions available, but most people aren't using them. And so the challenge may be to explore why people aren't using those solutions and how you can adapt or raise awareness about solutions to reduce barriers to use and encourage others to use them. So as you're exploring your project ideas, you want to think about whether there are solutions available and how your project might advance existing solutions or lead to new solutions. You also want to consider how you can use your project idea as a starting point to improve research culture and practice, and how likely is it that you will be successful? What other partners or stakeholder groups might you need to work with for your solution to work? Depending on the nature of your project, this might include research institutions or departments, publishers and editors, funders, scientific societies, or other individuals and organizations that are part of the broader research community. After you've considered impact, the next thing you want to consider is the quality or scientific rigor of the study design. So you're going to ask basic questions here as you would for any study in your normal research area. You first want to know whether the study design that you're proposing will answer your research question. If it's very difficult to design a study that will actually answer your research question, you might, not you might choose not to proceed with the project. You also want to assess the risk of bias of your proposed study. Will it give you a clean answer that you can interpret with confidence? Or is there a lot of bias involved in the way the study has been designed that might limit your ability to rely and to on and to trust the findings that you generate? Are the findings likely to be generalizable? So have you designed your study in a way that the findings apply to many research areas as opposed to narrowly to a single research area? And do the solutions apply to many research area? Are they also narrowly focused and only appropriate for a single field? Every study has limitations. And so thinking about your limitations before you do the study is really important when you're choosing between different ideas. You want to assess your design carefully to think about whether you have addressed all of the limitations that you can. And no study is perfect, so every study will have limitations that you cannot address. You want to consider how these unaddressed limitations might affect your interpretation of the results. Will you still have confidence proceeding on the basis of what you find, knowing that these limitations are present in your study? So our first two factors are impact and quality. The third thing that we wanna think about when selecting a meta-research study is feasibility. Is the study feasible? And there are a few different components we'll consider here. The first question is, is it possible for your team to conduct the research study? And you want to consider the time required, the resources required, and the expertise. Do you have people who have all of the essential skills that you will need to complete the project? And if you're missing people, who could you potentially invite to join your research team to fill those gaps in skills so that you have everything covered? It's important to note that making sure the study is feasible for your research team is a critical step. It may be an excellent study, but if your research team doesn't have the time, the resources, and the expertise to do the study, then it's not the right study for you, and you should move on to another idea that is feasible for your research team. 
The next thing you want to look at when you're thinking about feasibility is whether or not you have tested your study protocol and confirmed that it works. And when we test, we often encounter problems, and then we have to make changes or adjustments to address those problems. So you want to have done thorough testing to know what problems you encountered and whether you were able to address them and find solutions. If there are problems that you weren't able to address, then you want to think about whether the study will still give meaning re meaningful results if you have to drop those pieces from the study protocol. You also want to know whether different team members working independently consistently get the same results when they apply the protocol. So we want everyone to be working consistently and to get the same results. Otherwise, we won't generate high quality data. And this is especially true as we often have people working on the study who have different training and expertise. So knowing that everyone can follow your protocol consistently and get the same data, it's really important, especially when you're working on systematic review or literature survey style studies where you need to have many different abstractors who are doing the same thing and collecting the same information from each paper in a very standardized way. So our first three criteria were impact, quality of scientific rigor, and feasibility. The last criteria is also very important, and that is personal interest. And there are two very simple questions here. Is your team interested in the project and are they passionate about the project? Again, it can be a great project, but if your team isn't excited about it, it's not going to get done well and you should move on to a different project. So you also want to think about does, whether the project has the potential to change research practice in team members' respective fields. Often working on something that will have an impact in team members' regular research work is a particularly important part of maintaining motivation and excitement for a particular project. So before we summarize the factors to consider when choosing a project, I want to highlight a, one particular point that's relevant to people who are attending the Meta Research Summer School. When we're choosing projects for the Meta Research Summer School, we have to remember that we're going to have a team of people who are coming from all different research fields. And so projects that apply to many different research fields will attract more interest than projects that are narrowly focused on one person's particular research area that aren't relevant to other people who are attending the summer school or the meta research course. So if you look at our past projects, for example, we have looked at things like quality of reporting for image-based figures, and we've done that in plant sciences, in neuroscience, um, in, sorry, in plant sciences, in cell biology, and in physiology. We also did a paper looking at Western blot methods reporting and image display and graphical display, and we did that in cell biology and neuroscience. And then in the third case, we did a project where we assessed um, the use of methodological shortcut citations, where researchers cite a reference in, that used a method instead of fully describing their methods. And that project was done in biology, in neuroscience, and in psychiatry. So all three of those things are examples of a practice that occurs in many different fields. And we simply used concentrations of expertise within the research team to select the particular fields that we were going to focus on for the research project. So if you're watching this video because you're thinking about a project that you could propose for the summer school or for the meta research course, think about ideas that would attract interest from people across a range of different research fields. So to summarize, four factors that we want to consider when choosing a meta research project. The first is the impact, the potential of the project to change research practice and offer effective solutions. The second is scientific rigor, the quality of the study design. The third is feasibility for your research team at this particular point in time. Is the study feasible? And the final factor is interest in passion. Is this something that you and the rest of the research team are interested in and passionate about and will be motivated to pursue from start to finish? Thank you very much, and we hope to see you for another video in the future.